Hello everyone, um, my name is Hamdi Illustrator. I'm an award-winning digital artist, illustrator and music producer, but also the creator of Monkey Nation. My journey as an artist hasn't been easy and it, I can't just sum it up into a quick summary, but I'll try my best. See, it all began for me where I grew up in Namibia and I started off drawing my entire life from as young as I can remember. But I've also grown up in the house of a politician and my mom's a, my mom's a politician and a freedom fighter and someone that's fought her whole life for human rights. And then my cousin's a musician. So when I was younger, I always looked to all three of these elements for inspiration in everything I did. You know, it was always the three parallels, the art, the music and then the politics. And as I developed, drawing became an outlet. It became a way that my brain could think. It became a way that my brain could process. For instance, when I was in school, I really struggled with concentration and I just couldn't pay attention. But then I realized that when I drew, because I'd constantly fall asleep, it was just super just boring, <laughs> to put it short, <laughs> to put it bluntly. And yeah, when I, when I was drawing, and we keep my brain active and we keep me awake. So whenever the teachers got angry at me and they'd confiscate my books or whatever, um, I would just fall asleep instantaneously. And I tried to plead and get them to understand this, but they just always found it as a disrespect. But for me, in short, drawing's been a coping mechanism. It's been the what I go to when I'm stressed or how I think. I've always carried around sketchbooks with me just to write down my ideas or things that inspire me or to worry, like, jot down little doodles i'm not very good with coloring i never liked coloring in it was never for me but i really liked lines and the use of line work and so i've always carried that through with me right until i did my architecture degree and then luckily for me while i was doing architecture um we we even emphasized further line work and detailing and that takes a lot into the style that i have um it's very much comes from my architecture degree but also my influences and in terms of my creative process because i'm a multimedia artist because i don't just illustrate i'm not just a traditional illustrator i do draw with pen and paper but i also use the ipad and procreate for digital art but beyond just being an illustrator i'm also a music producer and music composer so i use various different software and i've been a videographer and a video editor so my creative process really comes from the heart or from the intention why are you doing what you're doing what are you trying to achieve and then manifesting it in the best platform in order to achieve that goal so if it's something that i think needs to capture people visually it'll it'll go to my drawing to my drawings and i'll start off with some rough, rough sketches and develop it from there but then if it's something that i feel like really needs to tuck at people's emotions i'll usually go to music because music tends to go towards our subconscious and with monkey nation it was important that we incorporated both both the audio and visual and you know the talents that i've been developing over all of these years came perfect never before was i allowed to draw use my art and my music and my love for the world and humanity all in one project so it was the perfect project to just really unlock everything i'd been waiting to show to the world well I had zero experience with immersive technologies whatsoever. Like, well, that's, that's not entirely true. Um, I actually used to work for Samsung and during Samsung campaigns, we launched the Gear VR, which is the Samsung virtual reality headset. But that was really gimmicky. You know, we were just in shopping centers, letting people try on the goggles and let them experience virtual reality. Um, I never really understood immersive storytelling, but I did get a good scope of what experiences were in it and what connected with people the most, what kind of created the shock value and what hadn't, what was kind of falling flat, what I really liked and what I didn't like. But that was pretty much it. That's all I knew about it before. How this experience shaped my approach to immersive storytelling is really in 
A, showing me the world that exists, right? Like, I didn't really know much about um, augmented reality or virtual reality. Um, but in the process of developing this project, I was able to go out to CPH Labs in Copenhagen, which is all about immersive storytelling. There were teams from around the world that were developing projects built in immersive storytelling. We met with people that had developed professional studios and gaming studios and virtual reality and were creating virtual reality experiences. And we got to speak to them and see what was kind of in their mind and in their heads in creating the experiences. And it's really about using the platform. Like the constant question we were asked is, why immersive stories? Like why, why do you want to be in virtual reality? Like what is it about this platform that you're trying to unlock? And for me, that was a really good question because it's like, why not just go to animation? Why not just make it a film? Why not just make it a, a, a comic book? But it was like, why is it that you want people to be immersed into it? What is it that you're trying to invoke? And for me, I felt like immersive storytelling is the chance for you to escape reality and completely be encompassed in by something else that's completely foreign to you. And I feel like in this process of doing the project, I was really able to understand kind of the aspects of Monkey Nation that really could be best enhanced using immersive storytelling. And it completely changed the way that I even wanted to tell the story in essence. Like it became a lot more about the world, became a lot more about the music and about what's going on around you in your 360 and how do we really get you to understand the destruction of humanity so that it really pulls at your heartstrings. My advice to any artist working in AR is to remain open-minded, remain with an open heart and look for things that connect with you. Go and experience things. Look for VR and augmented reality AR apps and look for things that like kind of trigger your emotions and take careful note of those because it's about you at the end of the day. Like your experience starts with you and you have to find what really triggers you and then take it from there. I exposed myself to so much VR and AR at, when we were beginning this project so I could really get a sense for what's really capturing my imagination, what's really pulling at my heartstrings and it would really help me A, understand what was possible in terms of feasibility and technology and what was out there but B, in terms of the kinds of stories that were out there and what was really connecting with me. <laughs> Working with Royal Opera House has been the biggest blessing of my life and it's not even necessarily the Royal Opera House as much as it's been my beautiful team. Like working with um, the team at Audience Labs who, and I want to shout out Annette and Sam who've been my guardian angels throughout this whole process, they've really gone out their way to keep this project true to how I'd originally imagined it when I was 14 years old. They've gone through hell and high water to keep the integrity and to and to keep the essence of why we started this project and when times got rough they held the fort together and I'm not someone that comes from the corporate world or from the commercial world so having people that could sit there and ambassador me, could mentor me, um, could give me support and advice, but also could handle um, conversations and stuff I wasn't there for has been hugely, hugely beneficial for me. And honestly, like, I just think we're a beautiful team. You know, we're always smiling, we're always checking up on each other. And I don't really care about any, like for me personally, I care about relationships and I care about building it up from there. So for they've been such a blessing and I couldn't have asked for a better team to help develop this project. The most challenging thing is working with contractors and people you're bringing into the project. See, when you develop something over such a long period in time, you really get a sense of each other, but also a sense of what this is actually about. When you bring in contractors that come in for short periods in time at later points, they don't really understand. They might say that they understand, they might act like it, but a lot of the time they're just trying to get the work or try, they're excited by the project, but they don't actually understand the essence. So really, working with other people has been a huge challenge and getting them to understand what we were trying to achieve with this project. And when things weren't going right, it's about communication, communication, communication. There's been so many things I've learned on how to better communicate and ways that you can kind of create an environment that allows people to feel like they can express themselves and share their opinions. Because oftentimes when you wait till the last minute, when you wait, when contractors just go off and they come in a day before deadline with their handover, it's not quite right and there's not enough time to change it. So I've come to realize the importance of early communication and really building that bridge as soon as you can.
it's about what you create at the end like the most satisfying thing is honestly looking at the end result i'm looking at how when everyone brings in their best having that feeling of this is better than i could have ever imagined it a and b like just in awe of what people have done like they they when you're in a team it's hopefully because you all specialize in different things and you all can bring the best so in my teams getting at the end of the collaborative process was really seeing the work of all of these people that did things that i couldn't even imagine and just it was so humbling because obviously this project started from a little kid's dream and something i started when i was just so young and to see all of these people at the top of the game come together and and pull it pull all their skills and their talents and their experience all together to make it what it is it's honestly like the most incredible thing i could ever imagine i don't think i would do anything different i think i the way i posted it was right it was about community it was about family it's about relationships so i don't get into business or work with anyone that i don't feel like i really get along with and that we understand and we appreciate and we can communicate like i've always said more than talents more than skills more than clout and network it's about humans and this is a human being like business um especially if you're a creative so if you don't like the human being it's very unlikely you're going to make incredible work with them so whenever i'm working with an organization it's it's about the individuals who I'm working with within that organization and how much trust and rapport I have with them and how much I feel like I can entrust them with with especially this project that's so dear to me and that's how I will move forward in every business negotiation going forward I've got too many dreams right so my hopes for the future is too much to go into right now but in one short summary i want to change the world for the better through all my art forms monkey nation is one of a variety of different projects i'm doing but it's my biggest one and it's the one i'm most passionate about and my hope for the future is that monkey nation manifests into something that everyone can experience and it's an experience that changes people's perspectives on the world i'd like for it to like really pull at people's heartstrings and get them to care about climate change and take action no matter where you are in the world whether you're in developing countries or developed um whether you are you know in peckham or in kensington it doesn't matter you just you watch it and it it does something to you and makes you want to care and i feel like every form of my art like why are we here on this planet if we're not here to try and make a difference and try and make it better and i feel like through all my art forms i'm constantly constantly looking at myself being like what can i do what are better ways i can approach this if this is not impacts the key word for me so if what i'm creating isn't create resonating with people isn't getting them to change their behavior isn't it isn't getting an impact then i'm not doing something right so my hopes for the future is just to continue creating projects that that tell amazing stories that immerse people in these worlds and in these characters and in these narratives that then get them to understand stories that they might have not emotionally connected to before but really get them to change and get them to want to be better people because i really believe in the potential i really believe in the future and i believe that if we all pull together and we all try and we all work as one we can make this world a beautiful place and that's what everything for me so yeah thank you guys <laughs>